Mrs. Barrett giving you dominant seventh chords from the ABRSM grade five syllabus. Now this is the second time that you'll be playing dominant seventh chords in the exam. So hopefully you have a good idea of what they are, but in case they're new for you or you're feeling a bit rusty um, in your understanding of them, let's just recap. A dominant seventh chord is an arpeggio that's based on the fifth note of your scale. So for instance, if you're in C major, you can climb up in your head by thinking of your violin strings. C hops over to the G. Or if you can't remember how your fifths work, you can literally just count up from C. C, D, E, F, G. So if you're in C major, your dominant seventh chord has a root of G. That can be a little bit confusing because in the exam, when the examiner asks you for a dominant seventh chord in the key of C, your flurried mind might think, okay, I'm gonna start on C. But remember, a dominant seventh chord is a chord that leads you to the tonic. So it's a five chord in the key, which is the chord that wants to resolve to one. In music, we hear this all the time, but we might not be aware of what we're actually listening to. So for instance, the dominant seventh chord that you had to play in your grade four exam was the one in the key of C. If you finished on this note, your ear would be begging you to play a C. And that's the point of a dominant seventh chord. It's leading us back to one. So dominant refers to the fact that it's built on the fifth note of the scale. And we call that note the dominant note. But the seventh, what does that mean? That means that we're adding a seventh to our chord. In the arpeggios that we played before, we would have our basic triad. So if that triad was built on G, it would be simply G, B natural, D. We are gonna keep that major triad, but in addition, we're gonna add the minor seventh to the top. So one more minor third will be added. This is the seventh note of that chord. It's not a seventh in the key of C, it's a seventh in the key of G, and a minor seventh at that. So in G major, obviously, we would have F sharp. So hearing that minor seventh can be the trickiest part of the dominant seventh chord at first. But it sounds nice and spicy, and helps us go back down. going to play a dominant seventh in the key of C for grade five, but now it's going to be two octaves. This doesn't really change anything except the fingering that you're going to have to do, but you're going to have the same main notes. So what were those notes again? G, B natural, D, F natural. Of course you're going to go up to the octave G, and now we're going to keep going. G, B, D, F natural. Don't forget that's a low one on the E string. Then your G, F natural, D, B, G, F natural, D, B, resolve it to C. So really slowly, just to give your ear a chance to hear those, this is a two octave dominant seventh in the key of C. seventh chords. So I would recommend starting to play them just as slowly as I just did so that you can really hear the overtones and how the notes are ringing. Then, just like you did for the chromatic scales, it can be useful to play the groups of the chords. These dominant sevenths are also going to have slurs of four, so you can already think of the group of four, which will include all your notes. You can play that forwards and backwards. If you find this hard to tune, it can be useful to speed the bows up, but use more of each note. So you're doing... Something like that. Then you can 
gradually make it less notes for each note. Make sure that your second finger is moving from the high position to the low position in a really organized way. The next group of four is a little more challenging. I recommend having the B already on the A string, even though G is the first note of that chord. This gives you more time to prepare for the reach back to F natural. Playing the groups of four in this way also trains your ear to recognize the sound of the dominant seventh. So, sorry, don't know why I played that E there. stroke, off the string stroke, but that's just really for fun. In the exam, I recommend playing it fully legato so that the examiner can really hear the character and also your confidence with the pitch. But you'll find that practicing scales is best done by using a lot of variation. This keeps your mind awake and active and makes it more interesting for you to play. So that's already the first uh, groups of the C key of C dominant seventh chord, and you would just add those with slurs following that practice method. Okay, so I'll make a separate video for the other two chords, but now you have a good idea of what the dominant sevens are and how to practice.